Hey there gang, it's Todd Knock and I'm back with a brand new video for you. This time I'm drawing Spider Gwen on a sketch card. This is a two and a half inch by three and a half inch Strathmore Bristol board sketch card. You can find these at most any art supply store, uh, whether it be a brick and mortar store or an online art supply store. Just do a search for Strathmore uh, sketch cards. You can find them pretty easy. They're a lot of fun to draw on. All right, I'm going to uh, answer some of your questions that y'all have been posting on my different social networks. I want to say thanks so much for all the great comments, all the great support, and all the really cool questions that you, 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 you uh, are share, sharing uh, on my different social networks. If um, you haven't checked out my different social networks, they're all listed below. I post them right here in the video description of pretty much every video I have here on my channel, so it makes it easier for you to track me down. Um, I'm always posting about... Uh, which uh, conventions I'll be at, with, what projects you can find me on, and then a lot of different type of art and sketch stuff um, that you might not see in comics or see here on my channel on those different uh, accounts. So give those a look. If you like what you see here, you can see a lot more on my different uh, social networks. Um, and also something I've, I've started doing here, I don't know if y'all have noticed it yet, but I post, I list all the questions. I post them at the bottom of the video description um, of each video, starting with my post-it note sketches, so that if there's a certain question you're looking for an answer to, maybe I've already answered it, and you don't have to wait for that question to be answered in a future video, it might already be answered on one of these videos, so all you have to do is just find that, that uh, video, and then you can tune right in and get your answer, uh, hopefully a bit quicker. Um, so, like I said, those are at the bottom of the video description of, of my videos. But that starts with my post-it note videos. That doesn't include my older videos or my Periscope live broadcast that I post to my YouTube channel. Uh, if you don't know about Periscope, it's a new app where I do live broadcasting, and you can find that information in the description below. All right, so we'll uh, jump into some questions here. Starting off with my Art of Todd Knock Facebook page, Ken Goodman asks... What was your first professional art in comics? What has been your most satisfying project? My first professional art piece was uh, for the back cover of Marvel's humor comic book they did back in the 1990s called What The. It was uh, just a lot of sp superhero spoofs. They'd, they'd make fun of the Marvel and DC superheroes. So I got to do an X-Men gag. I'd met uh, an editor... Uh, of what the at the Dallas comic book conventions back in the early 90s and I'd show her my portfolio as a young artist and sh and she kept giving me critiques and then probably after the fourth or fifth time I saw her at a convention she said you know what I'll, I'll tell you what I'll, I'll buy one gag off of you send me some ideas so I I came up with some different gags and she liked two of the X-Men ones I did so I put those together as as one page and we'll run it in the comic and it turned out being the back cover of of what the number 21 and I was still in art school so that was my very first paid publish work was a Marvel assignment so that's kind of a nice feather in my cap my most satisfying project ah it's it's so hard to hard to say I think creating my own uh, image comic series Wild Guard uh, my creator owned series where I created the characters wrote the characters drew the characters that's incredibly satisfying because you're creating something from scratch but getting to work on top name characters and contributing to their history so drawing characters like Spider-Man and uh, the Teen Titans and Young Justice and the X-Men uh, with Nightcrawler uh, those are very satisfying projects as well so just getting to work in comics in general is, is a satisfying endeavor for me because I have have such a passion for drawing and comics. Thank you for your question, Ken. As you may have noticed, I'm using uh, Copic SP Multiliners. These are uh, they're a, a pen that are similar to the Pigma Microns, but I really enjoy how these flow across the page. I noticed a, a slight difference. I do enjoy the Pigma Microns, but these Copic SP Multiliners are quite exceptional. Uh, they're a little bit more expensive, but the, the, the tips and the ink uh, cartridges are replaceable. So when you the, when the tip wears out and, and the ink runs dry, you don't buy a new pen, you just buy the new tip slash ink cartridge to replace it. So that's a really nice factor. And I really like how these work. I'll probably be using these more in my uh, upcoming videos. Let's see, we'll hit another question here. Take one from Instagram. Jack H. Grayson asks, how did you start working in the comic industry and any tips for someone looking to break into the business. Um, as I mentioned before, my first gig was for Marvel, doing that one-page gag for uh, What The, issue number 21. From there, I, I did, a, um, you know, I'm st I was still really new to the industry. I mean, I was very, very new, very green, and still living in Dallas, 
and the internet hadn't really exploded. So there wasn't really an option for emailing and, and, and you know, social networking at all. So it was all phone calls and snail mail. So I looked into, you know, getting any job I could anywhere I could. So I did some local uh, small press stuff in, in Dallas. Um, one, one small gig that I never got paid for, um, but it did see print. And then another one for this small independent company in Georgia, Atlanta, Georgia, uh, this was back when Image Comics was forming, so a lot of small publishers cropped up. So that was another job I did. That was my first time to do a monthly series. I did three issues of a, of a comic that did not come out, and I did not get paid for all of that work. I did get paid for, for issue two of this, of this title I worked on, uh, but the third and fourth issues I didn't get paid for, and they never saw print. But at that time, I had been uh, submitting my art to uh, the different Image Comics studios um, for their... Uh, talent searches, and I was discovered by Rob Liefeld when a friend of mine submitted my Wild Guard mini-comics, my creator-owned series I did in art school about a reality TV superhero team, and he showed my Wild Guard mini-comics to an artist named Dan Frega. He liked them. He took them back and showed them to Rob. He liked them, and um, they they hired me off of those as part of their talent search. So that's how I broke into the business full-time. Packed up, moved to California, worked right for Rob Liefeld. If you don't know who Rob Liefeld is, he's the creator of Deadpool, and I know everyone knows who Deadpool is. So Rob Liefeld, I was a big fan of his work as, as a teenager. I loved his New Mutant stuff. Very excited to work for one of my favorite artists in, in at, at Image Comics. So it was a really, really fun experience. So that's kind of how I got started. How do you get started? Do sample pages, take them to comic book conventions, show them to editors. Make your own comics. You can do small press printing. You can uh, There are online uh, printers where you can just print one-off comics, whatever you can afford. Or make yours on a, on a Xerox machine. That's what I did. C- editors want to see people with passion for creating comics. So make comics, share them with editors, and you can show them sample pages of their characters. So if you see a DC editor, you can show them Batman pages. You see a Marvel editor editor show him Spider-Man pages or show him your creator owned mini comic and they will see you can have a passion for for drawing and and creating comics and and um they can imagine what that would look like on their titles. So even if it's your character, they can tell, can this person tell a story visually? So that's a great way for both writers and artists to try to break in, is to team up and make a comic. Just make one issue. Make an eight-page story, 20-page story. Whatever you can afford to do, do that. Get it out there. That's a really big thing, is get your artwork seen, and also post your art on Tumblr. I've heard a lot of editors are looking for uh, new artists and new talent on Tumblr. So that's another way to uh, try to get your work seen, and hopefully break into the business. So let's see, I have another question that's kind of asked along these similar lines. So from YouTube, Jackpot21 asks, How was it when you first started drawing comics? Were the deadlines any issue, or did they have no effect? When I first started drawing comics full-time, working for Rob Liefeld in his Extreme Studios studio at Image Comics, we were all young guys, all in our early 20s and back in the 90s, back when comics were booming, so it was just incredibly exciting. Still is exciting, but, I mean, being in this big studio with, with you know, 20 or 30, you know, guys and gals writing, drawing, penciling, inking, coloring comics, it was pretty amazing. I'm really thankful for that, those two and a half years I got to work there, getting my start with Rob Liefeld. It was, it was, it was really cool. But as far as deadlines, uh, deadlines are always an issue. It's just knowing how to manage your deadlines. Now, when I first started trying to break into comics... I was asking questions at conventions of any professional or editor I could talk to. I was eavesdropping on conversations, and I, I, was, I think I was 18 years old, and I overheard someone say, John Byrne says the Marvel rule is two pages a day. Now, I don't know if that was true or not, but I took it as true, and I went home and I started to train myself on how to draw two pages a day. And there was no one there to guide me or instruct me. I just did it. I just drew, and I just drew all the time, and, I, and I, I, I honed it down to where I could get two pages drawn every day. So when I got hired by Rob and started to work at his studio, and they saw I could draw two pages a day, I was getting a lot of work because I was able to help them get some books out of some jams. But I was also working crazy hard, you know, seven days a week, and you know, because I was young and I was excited to be drawing comics, so I didn't mind. Uh, but, you know, then I started to readjust my deadline schedule, knowing what I could do, how to manage my time so I could do the best work possible. So it's just a lot of trial and error and getting to know 
myself as a as an artist and, and as a creator and what I could do and get it the job job done right and well and on time. And that's something I think any young artist should focus on is getting the job done right, getting it done well, and getting it done on time. And that's gonna serve you quite well. So thanks for the question guys. Uh, they were all kind of all very thematic and I hope you guys uh, learned something here from what I had to share. All right, a little finishing touch on the nose there, and we're done. I want to say thanks for tuning in. Thank you for watching my videos and subscribing to my channel, and I hope you guys are having fun. It's really cool to see your renditions of the illustrations I walk you guys through posted on the different social networks, and thanks so much for um, for crediting back to me. That, that's really cool when uh, you credit back to my account, so I want to say thanks for that. And I think you guys are awesome, and I'll see you again real soon. Take care.